Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from the thought leaders in the digital transformation and digital uh, infrastructure industries. And we are coming at you live. That's right. We are live at Data Cloud USA from the Lone Star State, Austin, Texas. And I have a very, very cool new thought leader to interview today. Not a new thought leader in the space, but a new thought leader to me. Um, Megan Baker is the VP of Engagement for the Green Building Initiative. Megan, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks so much for having me, Dean. Appreciate it. You bet, you bet. And I know that your your CEO, I believe, is a is a greener data author as she well. Is Vicky Warden? Yeah, she is a contributing author in both volumes one and two. Outstanding. So you know a little bit about green green yeah. data, right? Yeah. But let's talk. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Imagine that, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about. So why don't why don't we start with uh, kind of high level market drivers impacting influencing sustainability? What do you got? Absolutely. So there's a, a number of different market drivers for mm -hmm. sustainability, and it's great to kind of see them all come together because it means that there's kind of something for everybody, right? Yeah. So we have a regulatory environment that's certainly driving this, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing a lot of the SEC's climate disclosure. We're seeing California with Senate Bill 253. Mm -hmm. We're seeing uh, lots of state and local governments even starting to have some of these requirements mm -hmm. for green buildings. So net zero requirements, uh, sustainability certification, like mm -hmm. Green Globes certification requirements as well. Um, and so that's obviously a huge driver, right? For sure. Where they have to comply with the requirements, right? I, I, I don't know that there's a bigger driver yeah, than that. No, right? I, I don't know either. And then obviously we're looking at stakeholder engagement too. Mm -hmm. Investors are really looking for sustainable buildings. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to protect their assets and wanting to make sure that their buildings are going to be around in the future and that they're going to continue to be sustainable. It's definitely something that's a lot more important to people than it ever has been. For sure. And even not just sustainability uh, drivers for investors, but also looking at the people that we're going to be doing business with in the next generation, right? Mm -hmm. Those deci decision leaders in the future mm -hmm. are very concerned about environmental issues. So they're going to be the ones making these decisions someday soon, and they're going to be driving these uh, practices as well. I love it. You know what? what? Let's back up for just a second. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the Green Building Initiative. Absolutely. Yeah. We are a 501c3 global nonprofit organization who is dedicated to improving the built environment's impact on climate and society. And we do that in a couple of different ways. Green Globes certification is kind of our bread and butter. That's mm -hmm. our primary um, objective is to certify all different types of commercial real estate by making a rigorous certification accessible to all different building types. So we're really trying to you know, increase the pie, move the needle, making sure that all buildings have access to yeah. a sustainability rating system that is both educational and impactful. So uh, that's kind of our, our primary um, objective, but then we're also a, an educational leader as well. We host live events, webinars, yes. we put out thought leadership articles and things like that. So, so that, that, and, that, and that's why I asked because um, we, we were talking before the camera ever started rolling and, and I felt, I thought, you know what, Megan is an educator. Uh, she's going to come and she's going to educate us a little bit uh, on some of this stuff. And, and, and for sure, I, I kind of suspected that that was kind of yeah. part and parcel to uh, the Green Building Initiative. So very, very cool. I'm going to jump back into the script now. Cool? Yeah. Okay, very Absolutely. good. Um, uh, facil okay, <laughs> this is a fun one. Um, how are facilities increasing resilience and reducing dependency on the grid? Yeah, so this is obviously a very key point for, <laughs> yeah. you know, this conference, all conferences yes. that I've been to recently, yeah, yeah, like yeah. power is the huge issue, right? And like, how do we have enough power for these data centers yes. in all these different locations, right? And so I think I kind of see resilience as two different aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so the first is that, is the building going to be able to withstand any sort of like climatic events that mm -hmm. are a result of what we're seeing today, but also what we're seeing in the future, right? So like, we know that there is a changing climate, right? Yeah. And um, there's going to be more extreme weather events. We've seen it. That, it's, yeah. it's a proven thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Floods, fires, yeah. the whole work. So uh, we want to make sure that we're protecting the buildings and being resilient in that way. So assessing different materials, mm -hmm. orientations of buildings, mm -hmm. things like that to make sure that, again, we're protecting the asset, but then also the resiliency from the grid part, right? And so I think there's two different things that need to happen. I think that we need to be protecting our grid and like feeding back renewables mm -hmm. to that so that we can actually create a more renewably focused, empowered grid, yes. uh -huh. right? And then the other thing is for these data centers to be resilient and energy independent, right? So they need to be 
utilizing uh, renewable energy sources on site. They need to be participating in rec programs, right? Mm -hmm. Renewable energy credits and mm -hmm. purchasing those so that we can continue to support that development. Yeah. And then um, obviously the use of you know other types of energy as well, including nuclear and hydrogen, hopefully getting those at a wider scale. Yeah, see, that, that is, in, uh, some, I was talking with a colleague of mine earlier today, and that does feel like a theme. And, it, and, and the theme is, it ain't all or nothing. Right. You can't go, there is no singular direction toward a more sustainable sustainability yeah. uh, initiative. It really is going to take all of these kinds of, uh, uh, of initiatives and, and clean energy and innovation to make it happen over the long term. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're innovating at the speed of light. Yeah. And so there's all kinds of things uh, that are happening. So uh, a, uh, 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 you know, an institution like yourself to come in and say, hey, we're going to help you with some of these, uh, you know, some of these um, formalizing some yeah. of these initiatives and educating right. uh, the public on what this actually means um, over the long haul. Um, I can see that being absolutely critical to getting anything done. So yeah. very, very cool. Um, Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, what sustainability approach or innovation do you think will have the greatest impact going forward? <laughs> so I don't necessarily see this as a silver bullet. Uh -huh. and I don't think there's going to be one thing that sort of changes sure. the whole industry. But what I will say is I think that um, there's a combination of things. And mm -hmm. to your point about leveraging all these different sort of strategies yeah. to be able to come together and, and figure this out together. So I think that partnerships are really going to be key. I think that... Um, you know, utilities partnering with the data centers is going to be a big, uh -huh. um, a, a big point that would move the needle. I think that um, data centers partnering with city and states is going to be important. I think even the federal government needs to be involved in this. But I think that um, making sure that we're able to uh, commercially or wide scale uh, deploy yeah. nuclear and hydrogen is huge. Yeah. I think that the United States needs to be better about adopting uh, waste heat or heat waste reuse. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's something that really needs to happen because that is beneficial both for the individual data center as well. It can be uh, beneficial for the surrounding area too in terms of energy consumption and emissions. And then um, I also think that, you know, leveraging, I've already mentioned hydrogen and yeah. nuclear, but I think that that's going to be huge. The R&D that's going into that right mm -hmm. now and being able to deploy that wide scale is going to yeah. be huge. But then also even bulking up the energy efficiency or energy sources coming from renewables too is going to be big. So yeah. continuing to power data centers with wind and solar and, yeah. and looking at other renewables. And, and, and fossil fuel is a part of the conversation, but isn't the only conversation. Right. And especially as we begin to innovate um, um, how we get some of that power to the right places via, yeah. you know, nuclear and, and all of these other things. Um, we're, it's all, it's, you know, we're, we're, we're truly innovating on how fossil fuels are being used and how we're, you know, pulling that, you know, pulling it from the ground and, and things like that. So it all kind of plays together to your point. Mm -hmm. I, uh, and so, yeah, I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I find it all fascinating. And you also last, I know I'm going off script. Okay. I, I, I promise that okay. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, but you mentioned nuclear, what kind of risk when you, when you say that word, what kind yeah. of response I imagine, you know, generationally, when yes. I talk about nuclear to my father, yes. he thinks three mile Island, he thinks Ch Absolutely. Chernobyl, he thinks, Oh my God, we shouldn't be touching this with a 10 foot pole, but right. it, it ain't my dad's nuclear right. you know energy initiative right. um what do you say to people who are just like what are you you know this is this is worse than pulling it from the ground yeah we see the, a lot of the same sure right uh generational and that's understandable yeah right like that's yeah. totally understandable yeah. that's a fair point but um i do think that there's a lot of grant money that's being um allocated for r d in this space mm -hmm. i think that we're doing it a lot better i think that people are recognizing that look if we don't figure this out we're going to be in big trouble yeah. someday soon so i think that there's a lot more openness to it than there ever has been yeah there's certainly still some resistance but i think that you know if we're proving that we're really taking the time taking the the energy to do this that yeah. it is important and that we're going to have to transition off of fossil fuels in order to meet the climate goals that are a, rapidly approaching 2030 is not far away <laughs> it really it really isn't no. megan thanks so much for your yeah, time today absolutely thanks dean for having me Appreciate you bet it. you bet and thank you viewers for watching jsa tv stay healthy stay connected and we'll see you soon